final problem of section 8. We have various curves, elliptic curves, and one point on each of them, and then we shall determine its order. One way of doing it is to uh, map the point to the uh, back to the um, the complex plane by the inverse Lyastras elliptic functions, and then uh, compute omega one and omega two, and to see if there is some rational combination. This will be approximate, so I don't like this solution. I'd rather uh, compute the powers of P directly from the addition formulas. So we'll do that. And since it's the same we do again and again, I shall program it in Mabel. The other times I've made a Mabel program, I've actually just presented the result. But since the uh, it's it's all about this computation, I thought I would show you how I I do I can I make such programs and the way I think about it. So my son gave me a book some time ago on on uh, programming administrative administratively, and that change my view to programming completely with uh, emphasis on testing and uh, being able to improve on the program successively until someone has until it's good is finally acceptable but let's get it on So the function takes two parameters, the point and the coefficient, and they are both lists. So we will be needing a lot of local, oops, that was the wrong guy. Oh, we're still there. A lot of local variables. Um, Let's take out x and y. And an index, we get that for the moment. The first thing I will be able to, com I, we must be able to compute f itself, f of x and its derivative. Uh, oh, we don't necessarily need that, but we'll need the process, a procedure or function, the proc, to be able to do that. So, um, oh, if. And it's always just computing f of x. So let's just get x equals p of 1, y equals p of 2. Always good spacing. Prop. And what does it do? Uh, we could use an index and then program it, but I'll just type it explicitly. Um,
here we go through all the coefficients. So when i is unity, we should have x to the third. And when i is 4, we should have x to naught. Yeah, so let's just test that. Where does that pro procedure end? Oh, it ends there. So that needs to be on the same line. I never quite understood the syntax in Mabel here. No? Does it need a... Hasn't done... Hasn't needed a semicolon before. That's not it. Is it a funk? I'll just make a pause. Oh, this is the point. F equals proc. There's uh, proc and proc. So it can't be defined. Ah. There we go. So what's wrong now? Local is still wrong. Local, local sequence, proc, parameter sequence, return type, semicolon, it says that a semicolon is needed, and then What's wrong with x, y? I didn't expect to have problems with the... Uh, with this. They only have very trivial examples here. A local. Do we need to write what it is, what it does? Let's check that. But I didn't want it to return any type, I wanted it to print. Now, I'll just make a uh, break here and then I'll work out this problem and then I'm back. I'm back. It seems that one has to denote a return type. So I return a number as well, too. So let's see what we get when we run it. I find order. Not quite. F, co F, that's weird. Why doesn't it do that? It 
really doesn't do what I expect it to. Why doesn't it perform, perform this addition? We'll just take it out. So it can do it, but it doesn't do it up here. Maybe we should define a return type. Let it be, uh, well, it will be rational numbers all the way through. I don't know if that's an acceptable time. Return number. Uh, real. I don't like this. Semicolon expected, sure. It still doesn't do it. So the function is called. Let's try to uh, set y equal to this guy. That's it. That was it. So it gave us 16. I don't know what happens if we delete this too. I don't know what you mean. So we just get the one number. 64. And 16. And 2. Sounds about right. 32 and 32. Right, so now we can do that. So what do we want to do here? We want first to test point. Next, we want to compute twice the uh, point that has its own uh, its own um, its own method to double a point. And then we set n equal to 2. We count the order there. And then we need to to add n to add p to n p. And 
then we increase n. I don't know if that works here. Yeah. It's uh, a C plus plus command. And when this is done, then we need to check before we go on. We need to check whether we are finished. So we need to have a new point. We call them X N and Y N. So double P assigns them and app point does as well. And then we need to check whether we are finished and we are if we get the same X value. So I think we should do a while and then we don't want to go further than say 10. Don't even want to go up to 10. And x is distinct from xn do And then we want to print the point. So the last, the last output we get should be the uh, the point that has the same x value. So we should finally print. Oh, we can print the order simply. N plus one. There we go. I don't think we need that code, nor that, by the way. But let's, now we do need that. So, test point, that's the first one. And then we'll just, uh, we need to define them before we execute them. Oops. Oh, we can still. So the procedures we need test point uh, double double point and add p So we need to define test point first. Well, it's just test P, we call it test P. see if it's really neat if we need to do anything now what does it do print y squared and oh no y squared and f
just p and p is defined local yes I didn't do that yes and then double p and add p invalid local declaration I agree there we go so that worked now before I test it I'll just uh, define Define the two functions without uh, doing any of the details. see if that works it does so let's check whether it works this we don't need anymore and we didn't particularly Test P right. And we only test up to two. So this is not performed now. So the points fit. So the, the first part works. Now we need to implement double P so this will of course be the last so we will have M at least and then we need the derivative but it's local to P Just looking for the addition formulas. There they are. Oh, yeah, double. So let's make one called FM, just put it up here, then we can test it first. So the point of defining is this here is to make it testable in its own right. And then the uh, addition formula will be easier to read. So 
we take the coefficient down and divide it, and then we only need to go to 3. And then we print the derivative here as well. Unable to pass. What did I do wrong? So I need to check what it's unable to pass. What is the problem? Local M. Who made a local M? Oh, I did here. Still unable to pass. And it's still that guy. What if we uh, skip this guy? Sometimes I've skipped this guy and then it was able to pass it. It is. Surprise! So we get the derivative naught and uh, 4. That's 16 times 8 plus 16. That does give 64, does it now? And this one, 2. x to the fourth, that's 4x four to the third, 4 times 8, that's 32. I don't like this. And here we get 4 times 3 to the fourth, uh, I don't know about that. This is okay. something wrong here in FM. So let's print the coefficients or the the um, instead of adding let's do the seek and then print that. So it should print the sequence. It works. Uh, now what did I do? didn't print the sequence. So FM it prints the sequence. No it doesn't. I don't know what happens here. But then let's return naught. So here, naught, 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 that gives naught, and 48 and 16, mm -hmm. 
16 is correct, 4 times 4, oh, it's, yeah, 4 times 4, Four times four times so you can see the value of actually testing this which should be extremely simple Test P actually prints FM, so it should print naught as well. Did it do that? Yes, it did. So that's here. Then we have the sequence of the three addends here. They are all naught, which I agree with. And then how do we get 48? Now it starts with I being unity oh it's already here we've got it no it's to the th oh I, I made a mistake here it's uh, it's three times the one squared, that gives times four squared, three times four times two squared, my God. That gives 64. I think that was what it got in the first place. So, It, oops. it appears the test was wrong, not, not the program. And now I forgot that it still returns naught. Let's just test this guy. Three times, my God, three times three to the third minus 43, 38. So what did I do wrong here? It's to the second. Minus 16, and the last guy here. Three times three squared minus 14 times two times three plus 81. Right, so that was the derivative which we now trust. The next point is the double point. Oh, I'm working on the double point. So, uh, local m. So that's the derivative fn divided by 
2 times y. And then the x value we do that as a point here up here I defined x and, and y n so um, we'll just go ahead and define x n by the formula B divided by A. B was the second coefficient. And A the first plus and then M squared divided by Oh, we just put it up on the top here, divided by A. There we go. We have a formula for that. So that ends double P. Let's see if it compiles. It did. FM is implicitly defined locally. Nobody said FM up here. No. There we go. And now we need to uh, to print double the point. So this should be our double point. And one way to test it is that it's actually lying on the... Oh, we already see that it has order 3 here, uh, not point 0.4. So that sounds 
acceptable. We don't need to test the point, do we? Minus 8.32. Sounds familiar. Well, let's just believe in it. And then add P. We take NP out. Don't need that. So it's basically the same, except the formulas will be slightly more complicated. So we need to define a guy locally here. And then define M. And that's now the uh, slope between the two points. Oh, the slope. And then the addition X new xn is minus x minus xn minus b oops 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 I made a mistake up here when we put it on the same over the same denominator. We need to get the signs correct. So that should be it. NP is declared locally. Who uses NP? That was the first time I wanted to to assign NP. It's a little logical. It's not good programming really to have add P and double P assign the points. At, um, it was better to do it explicitly here, but we'll leave that for now. So, it has order 3, and this actually has order 4, and here we are not finished, so it begins to sound reasonable. So let's continue up to 10. Oh my God, do we see the system? One of order three, one of order four, one of order six, one of order seven, the holy number, one guy of order 8 and we do get a list of all the points so we don't need the first tests to be run really so now we can do this uh, better but never mind we'll just uh, it's silly to have the derivative printed though. The 
some might say that we should put this print statements within the uh, procedure double p and add p but i've been taught that that's bad practicing because then double p does more than double the point as well as add p does more than add the point it also prints out the result so the title should be add the point and print the result or and print it so the procedure should do no more than the name explicitly specifies Is this nice? So we get the, this, and then the first point is not within, it's not like the rest, we want to do that. Uh, print, so they all have the same format. There we go. Oops. So now we could present it. It adds up with the opposite point, 3 point minus 8, and then the order is, so that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and when we put it to sevens, we get unity, so it has order 7. Then there's just the problem with the last points. Here, we don't have Actually, we don't have, do we have a definition of an elliptic curve? I would like to have something like we can make any coordinate transformation and then it would get uh, the form y squared equals a third order polynomial with no double roots. But um, here we can actually do with linear transformations. So we say f plus one half then uh, y squared Uh, y mark squared is y plus one half. Not good enough. I don't. Uh, that's silly. How how come? It's y plus one half squared. Minus a quarter. Equals x to the third minus x squared. And that does not have a double root. What does it? It has the double root naught. Oh, but, but then we have get a quarter to add here. So what did I do wrong here? That's silly. I don't know what I did wrong. So that means that mark squared equals x to the third minus x squared plus one quarter. And then the point, naught point naught, becomes one half, no, naught point one quarter. Why, why not one, um, uh, one half? There we go. 
That was complicated. I'll just take note of the points so that I don't have problems. There we go. Let's see what it says. Oh, it does it lovely. It has all of I. And then the last point. x plus 1 square so y mark equals y plus x plus 1 half and my mark square equals this plus Now, the double product, it's 2x divided by 4, it's x halves. Minus 3 plus, that's minus 5 half x plus 13 fourth. And then we have to find the new point. So the sum is plus one half. No, x is one. So that gives plus one. Not plus one. One point one. So let's see. Well, I was able to do something correctly, though it involved some computations. Quote. It has order 7. So that finishes it. 11.20. I wonder how long that really took. Programming takes a surprisingly long time. And if one doesn't check for errors every step, the errors become increasingly difficult to find so that instead of taking 
one hour, it might take four or five to get this working. I have had that previously because all I've been interested in when programming was the mathematical details of it, making a very efficient and elegant procedure. And then if the thinking was just slightly wrong, it became practically irreparable. But, well, here you are.